A family divided by belief, now on BBC Two, the second part of our gripping drama, Signs and Wonders. Timothy, would you say something? There doesn't seem to be an office in the Book of Common Prayer that covers a vicar's daughter running away to join a cult. This is it. I want my Claire. You want what she was, not what she is now. You, know, you want to force her back into what drove her there in the first place. You would feel the work of your true father, will you, Claire? Oh, Father. Is your flight all confirmed? There'll be someone to meet you at the airport, of course. And please, you will let us know as soon as you've arrived. She's a major player. They must have big plans for her. You don't get anointed by the blessed bastard himself unless they're going to move you out. And soon. If you screw up, our name's on a federal rap sheet. We'll be looking at seven years. What's to screw up? We're in, we're out. No big deal. Boom, boom, boom. Elizabeth? Why on earth didn't you wake me? It's ten to eight. I'm going to be late. Elizabeth? Elizabeth, where were you? When two or three are gathered in thy name, I could only attract three of the fuckers this morning. Elizabeth! Elizabeth? You up there? You all right?
Jan? It's me. I, I waited until morning communion so I wouldn't have to talk to you. I hope you understand. I've left a week's worth of lunches and dinners labelled in the freezer. Can you manage your own breakfast? Please don't be cross. I I I'm not going to tell you exactly where I'll be, but I promise you there are people taking care of me, people I trust. I'm on my way to Los Angeles. I'm going to get Claire. I'm telling you, man, he pulls out wham, right in my goddamn fender. Look at this. Yeah, this really sucks, man. The girl. Tell me about the girl. Can I speak to you just one moment, please? Just for one minute, please, excuse me. Yeah, I want to know just exactly what you're doing about finding her. We don't even know exactly who she is at this time, sir. All right, her name is Claire Palmore, P-A-L-M-O-R-E. She's 24 years old, she's from the UK, a place called Sherwood Oaks in Nottinghamshire, and this is her picture. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Now, what are you gonna do? You related or something? I am an elder of the mercy mission of the divine revelation. Not family, then. She's been kidnapped, all right? Now, do I have to remind you, detective, that kidnapping is a federal offense? No, sir, you do not. Good. But all I have here is a description of common assault. I'm treating this as a gang incident. Well, you treat it any way you like, detective. But I'm going to the FBI. You do that, sir. Shouldn't you be in church? Stephen, I have to ask you, do you think Claire was coerced into her belief? I don't think she would think so. Then you don't think she could be coerced out of her belief? Father, why are you here? Stephen, your mother's gone to Los Angeles. What? She says she's going to bring Claire home. Damn parents, damn them all to the deepest hell. Demons, all of them. Father had great plans for his sister. We'll get her back, brother. You will speak when I want you to speak. It wasn't my fault. Shut your whining mouth. You have to believe Shut me. Shut your mouth. I'm sending you for an ethical alert. Satan worked through you, scum. Brother, please. I feel sure that God is just testing us. We'll get her back. What is this, a direct line to Father's thought processes now? Brother, please, just give me a few days. I brought her into the fold. Just give me a chance to get her back. Then I beg you to please send me to the ranch for my own good. They never come back the same. God only knows what those devils are doing to our sister as I speak. There hasn't been a day gone by these past few months when I haven't been faced with the thought we're all of us responsible for what Claire did. Then it's not my fault alone. She grew up in my shadow. 
I was the one who bore the burden of your thwarted dreams of academic success. Poor little Claire was... That it spot. is my fault. It's not what I'm saying, Father. Not it's not untrue. Bit, well, I think when Claire went into the Mercy Mission, she felt it was the first time that she'd ever made a choice for herself. Without Mother saying how wonderful she was. Without you or me looking over her shoulder and measuring her up. Tut-tutting. Stephen, there's something I have to confess. When she wrote that letter, saying that she'd found her Messiah, that this was the happiest time of her life, that she wanted to share with us the joy of salvation, you know what I did? I sent it back, with all the spelling and grammatical errors corrected in red ink like an examination paper. She never wrote again. Your mother never forgave me. I don't know how we lost her in the first place, but I do know why she would have every reason never to return. But I would love to see her again, just once. If only to apologize. Snacks here. Padre, bitte. And it's just. It's all right, Padre. This one's on me today. It was very kind of you, but I want a large scotch to go with it. Please. Funny, man. Oh, we only ever seem to see you at funerals. What's this then, Vicar? Out in sympathy? Well, believe me, I do know what it's like to feel redundant. But I'm here to drink with you, not to sermonize at you. Cheers. Cheers, Vicar. Ah, uh, thanks for coming round. I'll get you another one in. Thank you. Is this it then? Is this what it's going to be like when they shut the pit down next week? In here at early doors every day for a week, pissing away our lump sum. What I did want to say is that my door is always open if you should, and lightly though it may seem, feel like a sympathetic ear. Oh. Well, much good that will do us. Are we just going to roll over and let them stick it up us? They would have never have took this lying down. What are you on about? The peyote. Mm -hmm. Just drink your fire white to crazy horse. That pit, it belongs to us. It's food in your bellies, it's clothes on your little kiddies' backs. There's 50 years of coal still down that pit, they can't shut it. They can't.
Sherwood Oaks Colliery is my wounded knee. This is someone who's just had a long voyage. I'm sorry I can't be there to meet you. Please do exactly as I say. Don't look for me, I'll find you. Just get to the Santa Monica Pier. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. Yeah, yes, I'm expecting my parents from England to visit, and they were traveling on your carrier, but now I've been told that they're coming in a little bit earlier than expected this weekend. Is there any way that you can confirm that for me? Sure. Palmer, P-A-L-M-O-R-E. Thank you. Yes? Oh, no, okay. Thank you.
This guy always tends to work with some sort of consent. He's never, far as I know, dragged his clients kicking and screaming off the streets. I... FBI, could we speak to Mr. Diamond? Oh. I'll try him for you, officer. So, what do you want to do about it, Agent Santa Maria? Well, what I'd like is to eliminate the man from our inquiries. Give the federal charge a 23 skidoo and hand this one back to the LAPD and let them do nothing about it. I'm sorry, there's no one in right now. Uh -huh. Okay, miss, let's have a word with your house manager, huh? I'll take the elevator to the penthouse and I'll have him meet you up there. Thank you. Light in our darkness, I beseech thee, O Lord. And by thy great mercy, defend us from all the perils and dangers of this night. You're into religious headbangers, aren't you? They're part of my brief. I assume it's some complex condition of atonement. You come across the mercy mission of divine revelation. As a local angle. Well, well. Praise holy name. Hallelujah. God is not just another prophet. He is the new Messiah. Praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Leave it all behind. Blind, fine peace of mind. Relieve it. Where's the office? Over here. Why don't you uh, wait out here? We'll just be a minute, okay? Thanks. <laughs> nice pad. Agent Song, you and I are in the wrong business. <laughs> O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness and make, and make thy chosen people joyful. Samuel? The characteristic greeting of my vocation, even in all, seems a little uh, overblown in these surrounds, eh, Tim? I have been reliably informed there was something of a spiritual revival in the area. One of my constables reported the riffraff all walking around holding little black books. I'm afraid my parishioners were only returning their videos. If their parish priest preached a little less about the evils of pit closures and a little more about the Ten Commandments, perhaps my job might be a little easier, and perhaps who knows? You might not have lost your flock to the quick-save curate and his miracle cures. So it's me then, is it, Sam? Is that why we haven't been seeing much of you in church of late? Look upon my noticeable absence as a quiet but telling protest against the ordination of women. You think of going over to Rome? No, I think we'll stick with the timeshare in Malaga again this year. <laughs> Better golf courses.
nobody here right now. But if this is someone who's just had a long voyage, I'm sorry I can't be there to meet you. Please do exactly as I say. Don't look for me. I will find you. Just get to the Santa Monica Pier. He drives. More, I presume. Mr. Diamond, I hope. Come with me, ma'am. You and I have to talk. Hello, treatment and research against cult thought reform. Jeffrey, my dear, Pierce Diabolfo. Yes. I wonder if you and I might not be in a position to do ourselves a mutual favor. What are you doing here, Samuel? I thought I'd pay my respects to Mrs. Vicar. Why the devil not? I don't think that'll be possible, Sam. Why? Not around, eh? No, no she's away. Long weekend. Very nice. Yes. Peak District. Got an address? I'm afraid not. It's a walking holiday. I expect she'll ring later. I expect she will at that. Yeah. Timothy, is there anything here in the presence of God and this congregation that you feel the need to tell me? I don't think there is, no. Well, then I'd better tell you. I've just had a fax come through from California. Seems Mrs. Elizabeth Palmore of this parish, chairwoman of the Sherwood and District Mothers' Union and my good lady's bridge partner, is wanted for questioning by the FBI. Federal Bureau of Investigation, Los Angeles Division. Now, what would they want with a rambling vicar's wife? If I do hear from her, Samuel, I'll be sure and let you know. I'm sure you will, Rev.
tell me, what kind of people are susceptible to the message of new religious movements? I mean, cults. I'm not prepared to be euphemistic about mercy mission. You've read up on this, right? So? Well, um, young people, I would say, for the most part. Uh-huh. Um, someone who's looking for direction. Someone who needs to feel part of something, included. Someone who needs a definite system of morality. Needs to feel she's on the side of right, that there's black and there's white. I'm sorry, I mean, I'm... No shades of grey, huh? Where I come from, everything is grey. My son says even our rainbows are monochrome. So why would this type of person need this type of belief system? What do you think about that? I think that the way they were brought up, the ethics of their parents, have let this person down. What was supposed to be liberality appears to a young, inexperienced, but idealistic, not unintelligent mind, to be hypocrisy. What was supposed to be Christianity seems to her to be, I don't know, neither flesh nor fowl nor good red herring. Sounds to me like you might be talking about your daughter Claire, Mrs. Palmont. Yes, of course I am. So you seem to think that she's the right profile for one of these movements. Yes, yes I do. And uh, you and your husband, Mrs. Palmore, you're the kind of family that produces the kind of person that joins one of these movements? I have to live with that, yes. And what am I, Mrs. Palmore? What am I here for? You're going to get her out. You're going to give her back to me. Get out of the car, Mr. Now. What am I, Mrs. Palmore? What does your friends tell you I am? You're a deep program. Never use that term to me again, OK? I am an exit counselor for victims of mind control. This is not a question of euphemism. This is a question of defining our objective. I'm not here to unbrainwash the brainwashed. It's not as simple as that, OK? OK? How much did your friends attract so you had to pay me? They thought it might be about $15,000. I got my team. I got my operating expenses. I would not have charitable status. I, I can manage 20 now, Mr. Darwin. It's our life savings. I might be able to get my hands on another five. I'll try. Please, just let me see my daughter. You're Claire. She's the kind of daughter who joins a cult? Yes, yes she is. And you? You're the kind of family who produces the kind of daughter who joins the kind of cult? Yes, yes, we are. So it's your fault she's in? Yes. It goes from her father. Do you admit that? Yes. Are you going to pay me your life savings to get rid of your guilt? Please. Boom, Mrs. Palmore. Unreconstructed, 100% psychobabble bullshit. What are you doing to me? I'll tell you what kind of people joins cults. Anybody. Mrs. Palmore. That's right. Everybody's susceptible. The pattern of emotional, psychological, physical, even nutrition deprivation and reinforcement your daughter received when she went into a mercy mission is impossible for anyone, no matter what their background profile, to resist or withstand. The North Koreans had me for three weeks, filling me full of their medicine. After that, the CIA had me for six, shooting me up with theirs. 
I know something about mind control, Mrs. Palmore. And you've known me for just over one hour. And already you're prepared to hand over your life savings and let me treat you like a piece of dirt because you want to believe that I'm your ticket to salvation out of your own personal hell. Now you tell me who's susceptible. Everyone. Sister Claire is in mercy. That is not your problem. Your problem is to get your daughter Claire out of mercy. I'm going to help you with that problem. You're welcome. Mrs. Palmore, there's one more thing I have to tell you. In the early hours of this AM, and for every good reason I assure you, I had to do something I've never done before. It's against my operating principles. We had to pick up your daughter without you being there to help us. She's out. You've got her. It was not a happy scene. I had no idea what kind of state she's in right now or how it will affect my work. Are you sure you want to go through with this? That's what I'm here for. Then I think we'd better call your friends at Tract and tell them there's been a change of plans. Where is she? Can I see her? That's where we're going right now. <laughs> Dr. Palmer. Just exactly what's this destructionism all about, then? It's deconstructuralism, actually. Oh, I don't mind admitting it. It's quite beyond the comprehension of the School of Forestry. There's obviously something to it. I've never seen what we do in integrated management studies featured on Sherwood News. Yes, well, if you really want to know, it all starts with language. How can we postulate there's any particular reference between a word and the thing that it uh, refers to? You know, why should we call this a drink? A room, a university. Oh, I'm with you there, all right. I remember when this was the Ashfield College of Technology. So do I, this time last year. Yes, well, actually, what I'm trying to say is that the sound of a word has a purely arbitrary connection to the thing that it designates. Our knowledge of the world is really only our knowledge of language. So it follows, then, we can never really know the real world. All we can know is our linguistic appropriation of it. Whatever he's on about, this Cornelius Van Damme certainly delivered the column inches. This isn't a publicity stunt, you know. Van Damme's work could completely change the way we look at the world. Still, we do get more students signing up for management. Sherry. Steve. Oh, you are looking so good. Look who's talking. You look terrific. Uh, Academic prominence must suit you. I was trying to figure out how long it's been. Ten years? That's about right. Let me introduce you. This is uh, Sherry Rosson, an old friend. She's a professor of cultural studies. Critical at... studies at the Louisa M. Alcott Center for American Literature. And the official biographer of Van Damme. Oh, yes. We've been hearing all about his theories. Considering it's supposed to be all to do with language, we seem to be experiencing a failure of communication. Well, that's where you're making your first mistake. Why do you assume that language has anything to do with communication? Are you going to get me that drink, Stevie, or what? Oh, check this out. You'll like it. It's for the Transatlantic Review. Suffering Servant? The deconstruction of the life and persona of Judy Garland. <laughs> That's great. Stevie, what is this dump? I expect to be shaking its dust from my feet imminently. I'm just saying, sit it over here. I don't want to look at it. They may all look at it. You're up. And she's on crushed out. Finally. Sure it is. Leave me for hours, okay? Yeah. Hey there. Hey. 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 hey there. This is Claire's mother. This is my team, hand-picked. That's Scott, who should be on guard duty. <laughs> Welcome. I gotta go. This is Sydney. Hi. Hello. And Brandon there was inside with Claire yesterday. Hey. How is she? Tell you what, she's pretty tough. Is she really? Yeah. 
She only just now crashed out. Can I go and see her now? What your daughter needs at this point is some good food, a lot of sleep, a few well-chosen words from me, and the sight of a mother who loves her in reverse order of importance. That's part of the process. You understand? I'm in your hands. Vice-Chancellor. 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 Professor Van Dyke's car is arriving. Would you like to greet him with me? By the way, Stephen, love the coverage. Before you go, could I have a decision at some time, please, Hello, Claire. I'm here again. Lighten up. Give it a rest. Take a day off. Give yourself a vacation for once. What would you be doing if you weren't here? Hmm? Selling roses on the boulevard? The roses you sell are stolen. Liar! Prince of lies! Stolen from your own grave. Go ahead, have a drink, Claire. There's no cyanide in my Kool-Aid. Father's got a home, sweet home. Father's got a home, sweet Forget home. Forget about father. Father's One got mother. a home, Your own mother, sweet who home. bore you, who loves you, who's traveled halfway around the world to see you, who's waiting for you right now, in the other room, to embrace you. Welcome to Sherwood, Professor. My dear fellow, you sound just like Errol Flynn. <laughs> <laughs> Most honored to have you with us. Enchant. <laughs> I was wondering, sir, uh, did you receive my book? Please remind me of the time. Ah, yes, yes, of course. It was uh, The Shaman's Flight. Deconstructualizing the sacred. It's dedicated to, to you, sir. Most kind. Well, uh, the degree ceremony shouldn't take too long, and they're going to broadcast tomorrow's symposium. I see you're going to make me work for my uh, honorary doctorate. Uh, I already have her. Uh, uh, Seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Vice Chancellor, excuse me, would you mind giving the Professor a drink? I'll be right back. What the hell are you doing here, Pez? Sorry to muscle in on your big night. What more do you want from me? Could we go somewhere quieter? I've given you everything. I'm afraid this isn't about you, old boy. It's all right. 
Bernie. You can't hurt me, not anymore. And I'll never hurt you. Never again. Right, what is it? You see, the thing is, dear Elizabeth seems to have landed herself in a spot of bother. A slight case of forcible abduction. Oh, no. I'm afraid she's looking at seven years in, uh, as our friends say, euphemistically term it, the big house. How are you involved? Well, being as it's academic and clerical, it naturally passed my desk. Being as it's the mother of an old chum, I naturally took an interest. Thank you, Piers, thank you. The thing is that I'm afraid I'm privy to some information which might be very useful to our colleagues in the land of the free. What are you talking about? Your mother organized her little outing through the exigencies of an agency energetically designated Tract, Treatment and Research Against Cult Thought Reform. And it so happens that I have a source, like yourself, tried and true, therein. Well, cutting a long story short, naturally, your mother informed them of her whereabouts, and so I, too, know where this unlikely fugitive from justice might well be held up. You're not going to tell them, are you? On a bound, old boy. You've heard of the special relationship. At last, there you are, Dr. Palmore. It really isn't good enough, you know, lumbering you like this. I can't understand a word that Dan's talking about. Please excuse about. me, Mrs. You have to come, Stephen. You have to come, uh, uh, don't jump to conclusions. I think I've come up with a solution which leaves us all smelling of roses. I might well, in this instance, be prevailed upon rather to drag my heels. Long enough for you to make a call across the pond, perhaps. What's in this for you? Oh, come now, dear boy. Our traffic isn't only one way, you know. Besides, <laughs> I can't quite see how the cause of international justice will be greatly advanced by banging up a vicar's wife with a gaggle of, shall we say, enthusiastic female recidivists. Well, make your call, old boy. The meter's ticking. of my salvation. I know that Christ, the living Lord, works in me. I know through him that I can heal the sick and I can cast out demons in his name. Amen. Now, I may not know Hebrew. I may not know Greek. No, but I... I suppose your theology comes straight from the source these days. I'm not your curate anymore, Reverend Palmer. I am shepherd of my own flock. Not a metaphor that I'm entirely happy with. Shepherds are supposed to tend their sheep, not lead them to the abattoir. Whatever you say, they have been washed in the precious blood. Amen. There are miracles abroad in this very village, if not in your church. Amen. I pray for your soul on Judgment Day, Timothy. I most sincerely do. Will you never understand, my dear boy, that every day is Judgment Day for some poor soul?
Lou? Mother? Stephen. Why have you done this? How did you know I was here? No, we don't have time for that now. Do you realize you're committing a federal offense? What? The FBI could put you away for a very long time. What do you mean? What have I done? Look, just forget about Claire. You leave it, Mother. We've lost her. Save yourself. Go straight to the airport. Get the next plane home. Do it, Mother. Now. Sorry, Elizabeth. I don't want you talking to anybody right now. You understand? Is what we're doing wrong? What do you mean? Is it illegal? Let me put it this way. Until Claire says she wants to go back home with you voluntarily, of her own free will, technically, you and I are guilty of conspiracy to kidnap. And that is a federal offense, Mrs. Palmore. Well, that was my son. He seems to think the FBI know where we are. Get your things together. We're getting out of here. Now, Scott, get the cars out. Tell Sidney to pack up Elizabeth's things. What's up? Move it. In the name of Jesus, the blind shall see and the lame shall walk. Descend upon us this night, O oh Holy Spirit, we pray you. In the name of Jesus, wash away our sins, good Lord, that we may be white as snow. In the name of Jesus, cast out these demons. In the name of Jesus, banish this infirmity and make this child whole. In the name of Jesus, grant us a miracle here tonight. Get out of here, Satan. You're not welcome in this place. Look upon the face of the Lord, you betrayed Satan. Look upon the face of my God, who casts out demons through his holy name, through his precious blood. Get out! Ah! What are you doing? What are you doing? Walk in the light, my child. God's holy mercy has shined upon you this night. This child is sick. Someone call an ambulance for God's sake. Look at you. Don't you see what you're doing, you stupid fool? 